Hello and welcome to Canadian Footy Fan Channel. Content for fans, by fans. I am your host, Chris Talks Footy, and today I'm bringing you Canadian Footy Assembly, episode number eight, Mayhem in Montreal. But as per usual, I'm not doing it alone. I'm joined by some excellent guests this evening. I'm joined by Mehdi and Juan this evening. And Mehdi is a special guest as he is a CF Montreal fan, so he'll help us break down Montreal's off-season so far. But how are we doing this evening, gentlemen? Yeah, I'm good. chilling right now. Yeah. yeah that's good. That's yeah. good. We're all having good weekends so far. That's good. That's good. Apparently right now it's a snowstorm, which I'm not yeah. looking forward to for tomorrow oh, morning. Oh, uh, yeah. Brutal. Need that. But to be honest, especially here in southern Ontario, touch wood, our winter has not been too bad, except for that one snowstorm over the Christmas weekend. So we've been a little bit lucky so far. Yeah. yeah. Um, a reminder to subscribe to the channel, to smash that like button, and to give your thoughts in the comment section below. But let's kick this off. So first on, we're going to do a bit of a breakdown of Montreal's offseason so far. And from an outsider looking in, it's been a bit of uh, chaos. So we labeled this section Mayhem in Montreal, and Mehdi's going to help us break it down. So first of all, I'm going to go through some of the moves that Montreal has made in this offseason so far. So on the outside, we have goalkeeper Sebastian Breza going back to Bologna, as well as centre-back Gabriel Corbo. Um, centre-back Karifa Yao has gone to Vancouver. Um, Keyshawn Ferdinand, also centre-back, is a free agent. Alistair Johnston, right-back, has gone to Celtic. Sorhan Basong has gone to FC Argus on a free contract, uh, a free transfer um thomas geraldo is a free agent ishmael coney has obviously gone to watford and jordi mihailovic has gone to az alkmaar in the netherlands um on the inside you have george campbell coming in from atlanta united you have aaron herrera coming in from salt lake Real salt lake and then you have central midfielder Ilyash iliadis coming in from panathinaikos b um, also, Wilfred Nancy left as head coach after a bit of a, a supposed dust-up with owner Joey Saputo, and they brought in Hernan Losada to replace him, who was the pre previous DC United head coach. Uh, Montreal brought in Sandra o Grande to be their U23 head coach, and then less than 24 hours later, he was let go because of posts he made on social media regarding a former premier of Quebec. Um, Victor Wanyama has staying with the club, signing a two-year contract, so he is staying. Um, and then Kai Kamara submitted a transfer request uh, trying to leave uh, CF Montreal, and he did so through social media, which was a bit interesting. Um, he has since announced that he will be coming to the club to partake in preseason, but I do assume that he is still wanting to leave the club. So I'm um, going to come to you, Mehdi, and... If we're being honest, last season was a very positive season for CF Montreal. They made the playoffs. They showed positive strides. And this offseason, like I said, it's just like it mayhem almost. So just give me your thoughts uh, of um, like the turnaround from last season to how you're feeling now. I mean, um, I don't even know where to start, to be honest. Uh, you labeled it perfect, mayhem in Montreal. We're coming off a season where... Uh, non-soccer fans were watching because we were we were there you know we were we were almost we almost made it to the finals and coming into this year like just just to talking about Camara you know there's so many different channels you can go through without going to social media because talk about awkward right that uh, he showed up to practice and they didn't even know if he was going to practice he was doing some drills with the striker coach or whatever yeah and um, then I believe uh, he had a doctor from Sierra Leone send it. It to uh, Montreal to say he can't come to preseason yeah. but now he's coming to preseason I don't know, man. That's like, kind of weird. The, the players, they need to know they're scrutinized in the media. I mean, it's not like the Montreal Canadiens where it's like the religion is hockey in Montreal, but you're still in the limelight here. So, I mean, look, you want to move? There must be a, a problem if you're not able to speak to your coaches, to ownership, where you have to take that resort and go uh, to social media. But just speaking on him, like, we don't know what's going to happen with him. We yeah. would love to keep him on our club. But at the same time, you know, a lot of teammates are going to start – um second guessing him and saying like why why wouldn't you discuss this as a team instead mm -hmm. of putting it out into the public um i mean in terms of just 
Alistair Johnson, uh, the, the Team Canada this year, the the men's, they proved that, you know, they can they can play with the big boys. Like Belgium yeah, even yeah. said the strongest opponent was Canada, to be honest. Mm-hmm. And we played hard against the Croatians. So losing Johnston to Celtic, I mean, um, he's an excellent uh, uh, um, fullback. And we need players like that. I mean, Kone to Watford. I mean, I'm happy to see these players progress mm-hmm. in their careers, but they were key integral parts of the team last year, right? Even the coach, the coach drama, uh, Sandro Grande, you got to understand you can't be tweeting stuff like that. I mean, we, we don't want to take it back to the Biello choking incident when they used to play. He already had kind of a bad rep there. But, I mean, Paulin Marois, his tweet was just unacceptable. And the fact that he denied he did it is even worse. So just alone for the team, it's too much outside noise. It reminds me of Cristiano during the World Cup, his yeah. Pierce Morgan interview. We don't need this. We're trying to yeah. play soccer here on the field, yeah. score goals and win. We yeah. don't want this outside noise. So the, the Montreal right now is just, I'm sure Juan probably, he's not even a Montreal fan and he probably knows a lot of yeah. what's going on. What's interesting with the Sandro Grande situation, right, is that, Okay, so a lot of these issues were things from the past, like yeah. the tweet froze like 10 years ago, right? Um, yeah. Even the choking incident was a while back. For for him to regain the trust of the community in Montreal, he, he had to re-earn his stripes, which seems like he did because there was no other issues. He was working with the communities, right? He was continuing yeah. to progress the, the game in Montreal. So I think that's when Montreal wanted to start trying to bring him in, but to have him as like a reserve coach seems like too much of a, like a, like a headline job, right? Because mm-hmm. people will start noticing what his past was. Oh, hundred yeah. percent. And for yeah. and for Montreal, sorry, to for Montreal mm-hmm. to like sign him, knowing their his history, and then make him resign twenty four hours after, it shows like okay. At first, you already knew that this was going to happen, yeah. right? Do you have the spine to say, listen, this guy changed, right? Because, like, people can change in 10 years. I'm 28 now. I'm, I was an idiot when I was 18. People arguably say I'm still an idiot now, but that's up for debate, <laughs> you know? But um, people change. So I can understand why Montreal, like, could have signed him. But for them to to let him go 24 hours for, for all the uh, feedback after – it shows that like they have no spine. Yeah, you know? yeah, they should have gotten ahead of it. Um, like, um, all and stuck to their guns. It just seemed like you, you hired him, so either you didn't look into his past enough, um, or you are just going by what social media reaction is. And we know social media reaction sometimes could only last twenty four hours, and then we move on. I think if he had come out. Even it would have been better to have come out before, but if he came out after and said, you know what, I made some tweets in the past that I do regret making. Um, yeah. I'm no longer that person. I've got, hopefully he's gotten maybe some help or counseling or whatever since then. Um, and just just come out and say, I've gotten help. I've, I'm a better man now, better person. Um, I'm, I'm not going to make these mistakes again. I think it would have been fine, to be honest. Yes, what he said was disgusting. If we're being honest, making yeah. wishing death on a, a premier... Mm-hmm. Uh, former premier of Quebec, obviously, but we all have said stuff, maybe not to that degree, but we've all said stuff that we, in the heat of the moment that we, uh, afterwards, we do regret. Um, I think if they had just gotten ahead of it or or he just came out and apologized, I think it would have been fine, but it's just, it's just more chaos. I think it's just with, it's not just the one incident with uh, Montreal, it's everything that's happened so far. So Mehdi, as you said, I don't think it's losing the players that is the problem. Like, we all expected Johnston to move on. We all expected Kone to move on. Sure. We all expected Mihalovic to move on. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not so much the player side. It's just with oh, with those players anyways. It's the Wilfred Nancy incident where apparently there's a bust up with Joey Saputo. And I'm going to assume it's with regarding investment into the club. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm assuming Wilfred Nancy had wanted... Uh, more investment to bring in better players, especially with so many players leaving. And uh, mm. I assume he did not get the response that he wanted from Joey Saputo, and that's why he has left. Um, you're bringing in Hernan Losada, and that's something that Juan and I were discussing on previous Canadian 40 Assembly episodes, was that who is CF Montreal going to bring in? What are they going to prioritize? Are they going to prioritize someone with MLS experience, someone who has lots of successful experience elsewhere, or is the focus going to be on somebody who speaks French? 
Um, and to me, I don't think Hernan Losada is the ideal person for the job. I think he was brought in because he does have a little bit of experience because he was with DC United um, and he does speak French. But I, I think there were better options available to them, um, especially because they are going to be going through a bit of a rebuild right now um, with their team. Um, but but what, what, what have you find the most frustrating part of this offseason? Was it, was it Nancy leaving? Um, was, it, was it the Sandro Grande incident? Um, is it this Kai Kamara new incident? It's just, it just seems like every couple of weeks there's something going on to see if Montreal right now. So to, to sum it all up, I mean, exactly what you said. There's just so much going on. I feel like we brought in this coach as a replacement to just keep the kid, the guys with their heads up. You know, he's got a bit of experience in the MLS. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of Nancy leaving, you know, uh, my best friend works at uh, Hockey Etc., which is run by the Saputo family. I've mm -hmm. personally met Lino Saputo Jr. myself. Very classy uh, man, very gr great values. I don't know Joey Saputo personally, or I've not, I haven't heard anything about him. There must be, I don't know what happened with Nancy, but the fact that he's going to be coaching Columbus crew next year, right? Um, from, from what I uh, read, right? He's, yeah. he's, he's still coaching. So if we could have, you know, when it comes down to it in Montreal, we've always had this problem, even with the hockey team, the bilingual, the French. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're basically, you're pooling... Yeah. candidates from a smaller pool when you're not just because they can't speak french i understand for the culture for montreal but for for soccer for winning for the whole purpose of what we're doing this for you mm -hmm. need the best qualified person to coach the yeah. team. And canadians themselves the hockey team has many times not been able to get the per the best guy out yeah. there because he didn't speak french so same thing now i mean thierry henry was i don't know what happened with him i love thierry henry as a yeah. coach here when was yeah. coaching, I, I think it was COVID. COVID was came COVID, at a bad. It was COVID. Issues. Yeah. Like I, when he when he was the coach, so I think they're gonna. I still think they have some 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 room, and they have a. They might have something in a bag of tricks. We might bring a, a experienced coach over, or maybe they might give uh, this guy a, a chance to, to prove himself. You know, you have to start somewhere, right? And um, well, what is it? Isn't it Wayne Rooney coaching DC United right now? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. and. Um, uh, you know, we have the, uh, yeah, I think, um, I think uh, overall, I don't know if it's losing the key players or the coach situation or Camara or it's, it's everything. It's just, we we got to get some positives out of this. Somehow, yeah. So. Do you uh, feel like, um, do you feel like last year's squad over, not overachieved, but they overperformed on what was expected? Because um, let's say from the beginning of the season to where you guys were, was that something you guys expected as fans with that kind of quality you had on the team? Me personally, uh, watching from the beginning of last season, I, I would have played them out. I wouldn't have thought they would have got that far. I think it was the chemistry built throughout the season. Also, the fact that there was the World Cup, right? So they were, yeah. Al Alistair Johnson, Kone, they were training already. Um, you know, even Pantemis, right? Uh, losing Brezza to Bologna, that's just Joey Saputo owns Bologna. So he can just be like, go back to Bologna. We can grab a player from Bologna. But Pantemis actually proved to be our starter. Yeah. And he actually worked with the men's national team as well. Mm -hmm. So I think I think Montreal has, this year, we, we, we I think we could still make the playoffs this year. I think we just need to minus all the noise and just stick to, to fundamentals, you know? Yeah, because uh, I, I feel like the reason why uh, Nancy and... Saputo had two different visions of the, where the club was going, right? Because uh, Nancy wanted more of a um, investment into the squad because he knew they were going to lose players after the World Cup. Usually when you're at a higher stage, people are more interested in who's playing, right? And you get to see the turnover now. Um, I think Saputo is saying, okay, now that these players are leaving, we have to bank it in as much as we can. I don't know how the club fan finances are, but it seems like Saputo's more willing to make Montreal as like an investing club where yeah. we're trying to get a lot of these young players, a lot of players that don't have much opportunities, raise them and sell them at a high price. And maybe yeah. Nancy thought, okay, maybe we wanted to keep them, give them um, good contracts so we continue building a squad. So maybe mm -hmm. that's how they had two separate visions, but yeah. I'm not sure. Could have been something else. I feel 100% there was that conflict somewhere where their visions just weren't aligning. And you, you said it perfectly, like, uh, like take, for instance, Campbell or even the guy that from Panatakios, uh, Ilias. Yeah, yeah. These are good opportunities for these guys to really step up. And mm -hmm. why not in a place like Montreal? Like, for uh, sure. people already 
say Montreal is like a taste of Europe. So I think mm-hmm. this Greek guy is going to love it here. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's it. I think Nancy probably had a different vision that Joey Saputo didn't have the same vision. That's it. Yeah. But, you know, I, I miss the days when we had Deveo, we had the Drogbas, we had mm-hmm. Nesta. I used to I used to uh, drive the shuttles at the airport, people going on vacation. Mm-hmm. I would get tips, you know, I'd pick up the luggage, I would get exercise. And I saw the, the impact. It was in 2000, I don't remember when, but Nesta was on the team and he they were all in the tracksuits. And I, I was starstruck. I was like a Nesta, Alessandro Nesta. This guy is right in front of me in an impact uniform. So maybe if we could, if we could shell out and get one, like, you know, like, I don't know, like, a, like a, a Giroud, a Giroud yeah. would be, a Giroud would be. You know, the guy's French already. Um, so that's it. I would love to see another big name come to Montreal. Like I, like Insigne, the highest paid player in MLS. How much is he making? 19 million, this guy? He a played lot. pretty good last year too. What did he have, like six goals or something? Yeah, he played well. He played well. And they had the other guy too. Uh, Bernadeschi. Bernadeschi. Yeah, yeah, like, FC, uh, Toronto FC, I don't know if they're owned by the, the students' <laughs> union or the teachers' <laughs> union. <but they're> <laughs> we, uh, we are owned by Bal and Rogers, and we know how they like to rip us off on internet, cable, and uh, so, uh, cellular services. So that's what we're paying for. It's we're paying for Insigne and Bernadeschi. That's uh, it. <laughs> and uh, I guess, Eddie, do you feel like you have, um, th- does the fans have the same amount of patience as you guys had last year? Or to be honest, there... I know I know some core fans who are still not um, over the fact they changed the name to CF Montreal. They made a weak logo with the snowflake, and then yeah, they it's had to changed change. again. I yeah. used to go to the Impact games, and I used to sit with the Ultras. I don't know if anyone knows the Impact well. That's their fan club, the Montreal Ultras. They're some serious hooligan type fans. They have the the scarves with with ultras on it and i know they weren't too happy when they switched to cf montreal i've been to games at the olympic stadium against uh, fc joe public uh mexican during the champion canadian champions league and let me tell you there was forty thousand people in the olympic stadium and it was it was bumping so th- the market is here and you saw last year i mean we lost in new york right it was the semifinals pretty much like the city was it was like the habs were in the playoffs the canadians like when the canadians are in the playoffs here the city's on another level you yeah. saw what happened in 93 with the riot. So when the, M- the FC Montreal, see, I still call them the impact. I can't call them Club de Football Montreal. It's the impact, know. you know? Yeah. Like, I'm thinking of Moro Biello when he used to play on the impact, let alone when he coached. But yeah. yeah. The market is here. We're just, we just need to get our shit together. That's it. For sure, for <laughs> sure. So, like, one hit here, uh, so like Robbie here says, uh, the quality of players moving is a testament on how good CF Montreal were last year, for sure. And uh, CF Montreal... I have definitely proven that they can develop talent. And that was uh, something we have to praise Wilfred Nancy for. It's something he did excellently, um, was developing these players and getting the most out of them 100%. Um, and Robbie here is also questioning, like, uh, don't know what the formula for success in Montreal is, but they won't always be able to have success in player development. They'll have to invest in talent and facilities or risk being another expose. So I think yeah. that's where Montreal, I think that's, like uh, what Mehdi was saying and one was saying is the difference between what um, Wilfred Nancy was looking for and what Joey Saputo was looking for. I think Wilfred Nancy was wanting to build on the success for last year. Obviously, he knew some players were leaving. And I think Conan was going to leave regardless. I think yeah. Johnson was going to leave regardless. And I think Mihailovic was going to leave regardless. Those three were leaving regardless. But I think maybe you could have kept uh, or keep... Uh, uh, Miller for another season and now he's being linked to even potentially a trade within MLS not even going to Europe so it looks like Montreal really wants to move him on regardless of where it is and it's not really about helping the player develop and then moving him on it's just moving him on for moving him on sake um, which I, I don't uh, to me I respect Montreal as a rival so it is a big difference to me with regards to the so-called rivalry TFC has with Vancouver and to me I'll say it now, and I keep saying it in every episode. I, in my opinion, Vancouver is just some irrelevant MLS team that happens to play in Canada, and their fans have beef with us in Toronto for some reason. Uh, TFC and Montreal have a proper rivalry, in my opinion. And uh, those, uh, when in the Giovenco era, when we were playing Montreal in the playoffs, when they beat us the one year in the playoffs, and then we beat them in the in the next year in the playoffs when we went on to win. Uh, no, we went to the final that year, and then the following year we won it. But we played Montreal a couple of years in a row um, in the playoffs, and it was exciting football and something that I really love. 
Um, obviously, it hurts even more when you lose in the playoffs to your rival, but when you win, it means even more. Um, so I want Montreal to do well. Obviously, I don't want them to win, um, but if Montreal makes the playoffs and they compete against TFC and TFC beats them in the playoffs, oh, I'd love that. But with Vancouver, I don't care what they do. So to me, I, I would like Montreal to, like you're saying, Mehdi, they need to invest. They can't just keep, like Robbie here is saying, they can't just keep relying on bringing in the next player and the next player. Like, so, they brought in George Campbell and Ilyash Iliadis. If they do well, I think they'll be moved on within a couple of seasons, to be honest. I don't know if Montreal will hold on to them and try and develop or try and build a squad around these players. It's hard to tell with what Montreal is doing right now. Are they looking to win something or are they looking to just be a development club? Um, I, if I'm a Montreal fan, I'd be frustrated if they were just wanting to be a development club because that's something what a small club does. And Montreal should be aiming to be a big club. And I know that might be difficult with the current ownership. Um, and maybe that's a, oh, Medi got disconnected. Blacked out. Blacked out, I guess. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what happened there. Um, but one, what, what we, one, uh, I'll come to you here. We're talking about Joey Saputo. Would you, if you were a CF Montreal fan, would you be wanting new ownership, or are you, uh, or were you okay with how Joey Saputo is running the club? Ah, welcome back. There we go, Sorry, Sorry about go. that. No, no, all good. It happens. There we go. I'm back. <laughs> so, so Mehdi, I actually come to you. Uh, are you, are you happy with how Joey Saputo is running the club right now, or do you think uh, the club should look to find new owners? So, are you Saputo in or are you Saputo out? I'm Saputo in because the the experiences I've had with the Saputo family are great. Because like I said, my best friend works for uh, Lino Saputo. And uh, I think Montreal soccer and Saputo are engraved together because it began, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Joey Saputo is the original founder and owner of the Impact, right? Um, he also owns Bologna, if people don't know this, in Serie A. So the fact that, you know, like we were talking about Brezza and the other player, you know, there's a couple of players you said that we lost who were actually homegrown developed mm -hmm. players in yep. Montreal. I believe uh, Pablo, what was the last guy? Uh, fuck. Uh, well, the players, well, you got Thomas Geraldo, who you got That's it, Geraldo. Yeah, uh, Basong, you developed. Keyshawn Ferdinand, you developed. You may so you resign. Oh, you may resign. Oh, Ferdinand, you I, may resign. Geraldo. I think they're just free agents at the moment. They don't have a contract. So that's it. So we were just talking about how we bring players in, they get developed, and then somehow we we get rid of them, right? Mm -hmm. So those, that's two. That's an example of two players right there that were developed here in Montreal, mm -hmm. and now they have chances to um, go elsewhere. So I personally feel like I think Joey Saputo is doing. I mean, look, if we look at last year, where we were a good team left it's last year. Let's let's forget about all the stuff in the news and all the stuff happening right now and the, the losses and this and that. Um, every team goes through adversity. Every team go. Every teams go. Good teams go through troubles and tribulations. You know, like the um, Michael Jordan didn't start winning world championships in the 1980s, right? It took till the 90s. He lost a lot before he started to win. They couldn't beat the Pistons, the Bulls, back in the day. Yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. I'm relating to the basketball. So Montreal here, like last year, we were, I couldn't believe that we were almost at the MLS Cup. Mm -hmm. to, from where we came from, think about it. We weren't in the MLS, right? At the start, we started out in U.S. soccer. We were mm -hmm. playing against, like, mid-tier. We weren't playing against the top tier. We only got into the MLS, I believe, in the early 2000s, if I'm not wrong, yeah. or yeah. late 90s. We're talking about Sandro oh. Grande was playing with Mauro Biello, and we had, uh, what what player, I, don't know, I remember we used to have this Brazilian player who was uh, outstanding, like, early 2000s, I'm talking about. So I think Joey Saputo has been doing this for this long. I think he's, you know, he had some differences with Nancy, but I think this year is, he, he can really prove to us that he knows what he's doing. Like, he, he owns two soccer teams, one in Syria, one in MLS. It's high, high, High playing team, so yeah, uh, I'm I'm sticking with Saputo on this one. I, okay. I like the cheese. I think we can do it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, Montreal it's they cheese. joined they joined MLS <laughs> in 2012, uh, oh. but before that they were playing in the North American Soccer League. So that's it. Exactly. Yeah, that, that was. Uh, the, I think so they said that was here. like the third third tier of uh, American soccer. So it was that's quite it. the jump. It was quite the jump. Yeah. But yes, yeah, CF Montreal obviously or the Montreal Impact. Um, they do have history, unlike prior to the MLS, unlike TFC, who just were like an expansion franchise, completely new team. 
Um, I mean, look, uh, TF. I love TFC to be honest. Like you got you got star play. You got Michael Bradley. Yeah. I, mean, I remember uh, you guys haven't had a striker since Altador though. But like you guys got a solid team. You with uh, Insigni. Um, and Benedict. Uh, you know, I, I liked F- TFC when you guys had Dwayne Johnson. Uh, no, not Dwayne Johnson. Dwayne Rosario. Dwayne. Rosario. Yeah, know, the Canadian wrong. legend. I think it's from Scarborough, yeah. represent, I believe. When he was on TFC scoring goals, though, uh, I used to Yeah. Dwayne Rosario, Canadian legend. Yeah, yeah. I think hopefully, as the Canadian program grows, hopefully he's somebody that we all do remember. Um, 100%. Unfortunately, he did, he did not have the opportunities that a lot of the um, players now do get. Who was the other British guy you guys brought? Uh, Jermaine Defoe. What are your Jermaine, thoughts? Oh, he was a he was a bit of a flop. Uh, he came. Uh, yeah, there you go. And there he left. <laughs> it's yeah, like if you talk about Mar- Drogba, Drogba was a good pickup for the. Yeah, Olympics. Drogba yeah. for CF Montreal for sure, man. I he, went to the game like it was Montreal when Drogba played here. It was like when um, what's his name played on the Alouettes, uh, Manzel. Manzel. Remember oh, Johnny Manzel? Manzel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Manzel played on the Alouettes for a season. Yeah. Everybody went to At the least Alouettes. At least performed on the pitch. Uh, Manzel Drogba, maybe not so yeah, much. That's it. Yeah, yeah, even DeVeo. DeVeo did great with the did, Yeah, for sure, for sure. He did. He did. So, Mehdi, what do you think your expect? Or what are your expectations for the upcoming season? So, I know you said you're wanting to maybe make the playoffs, but um, what do you think will happen with CF Montreal? Do you so, think they'll win the Canadian Championship maybe? Or do you I mean, think they look, can make a run in the playoffs if they make the playoffs? Again, I don't know why I'm I'm relating it to hockey again, but the Habs one year with Carey Price, we made it to the Stanley Cup Finals. Yes, and then the next year we did. were total shit. So <laughs> I feel like this year, if the CF Montreal made it almost to the end, and this year could be a rebuilding stage straight up. We need a new coach. We need strikers. We need fullbacks. We have we lost a lot of players, but in the end, like I would say, like. The core isn't there, but we still have the same camaraderie. It's just we lost some key components, which we knew we were going to lose. World Cup put the shine on Canadian and American soccer. Most people know about North America, MLS, but Canada really proved a lot of they a lot of naysayers. They didn't take things when they were with Canada, Belgium, Croatia, and Morocco. Canada wasn't even looked up like a contender. They were like, oh yeah, okay, we're gonna go do okay, but. We turned heads, even though we didn't make it past the first round. So we're not, we're like, soccer is strong in, in Canada. People don't yeah, think like sure. hockey is the, the number one sport, but like we still have diehard fans going for out sure. there. Those yeah. Montreal Ultras, they're still out there. I don't know what they're called now. I don't know if they're still the Ultras, but they were lighting flares. They were pretty crazy. Oh, they yeah. were banned, weren't they, just recently? Was there it, you go. It... See, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that was also yeah. the TFC fans, to be honest. A couple Those seasons games ago, were fun. we we had a we had a supporters group that got uh, like disenfranchised. But Y'all burned the like, stadium up... down. TFC. Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, we little... did. We were throwing yeah, we, we were throwing flares at opposition fans and all sorts. It was a little. I think it was the inebriati. I think yeah, they, there are no more, and all their members had to go through like a three hundred dollar training. That they're not gonna be. Uh, God damn. Yeah, no, they, quite expensive to stay a TFC fan and attend games if you were a uh, former in that. So what are what are the TFC, what are they called the TFC fans? Oh, now there's so many supporters groups. Um, I know you have Kings of the North. Um, Kings of the have, North. Never... You have a section two hundred seven, I think, or something like that. Um, um, they, they've all, too, no? Yeah, they got. Uh, it's, there's multiple. It's not like we have one unified supporters group. We have multiple, to be honest. Um, I would love to come uh, catch a Toronto oh, game. I've never oh, seen it's, a Toronto. It's, it's, it's great. It's great. Maybe not where... Maybe come during... If you want to come during a CF Montreal game, maybe I'm don't wear blue. Yeah. Don't wear blue. Um, you might get a little bit of heckling. Hey, uh, but hopefully I, nothing the, too bad. Hopefully nothing too bad. I'm the I, I'm the type. I'll wear my I'll wear my impact jersey. But not oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. You can just yeah, be yeah. be loud and proud. Okay. Yeah, right. Maddie, I, I'm expecting a lot of good things for you guys for this year. I'll be yeah. honest. Like, um, yeah. I I was listening to this interview on One Soccer with Losada, and I think it's important for a new coach to implement a new identity when he's Mm -hmm. going into the squad. And it seems like he's more, um, he's more emphasized on possession, right? Uh, He's trying to create that identity. And a lot of the signings that he brought on are 
players that want to play with uh, possession. Like George Campbell, like he's a guy that likes to play with the ball a lot. As a center back, yeah. it's like one of the key things uh, for that possession, uh, for that uh, position, right? Like if you're comfortable on the ball, you can play back to your goalie and keep receiving and passing. Um, with Aaron Herrera, a guy that's been a veteran with Salt Lake for a, like amount of years, he's comfortable yeah. with the league itself. Yeah. Um, with Elias Adat, can't even say his last name. Uh, Elias Eladas, am I saying it correct? I think it's Eliadis. Eli Eliadis. Yeah, these Greek Man. names sometimes are a little bit. <laughs> um, At least he has a short Greek last name. It could be exactly. one of them that are like this long, but yeah. I think I think he'll be like a future replacement for Biet. Um, he's a CDM mm -hmm. that Panantha goes B. I don't think he's at MLS quality yet, but I think he'll have a good study with uh, with Biet. Yeah, Piet and one Yama to learn off. And one so yeah. yeah, so he's got two. For sure. And I'll be interesting to see how they play CF Montreal last year. So last year, CF Montreal were played with the back five, but they still played with the two DMs. Um, I don't know how Lasada is going to play with uh, CF Montreal. It'll be interesting to see. Um, but I think they're definitely going to have to build around their midfield of Piet and Wanyama in the upcoming season for sure. Um, but yeah, I, like their pickups, like Herrera, I do wonder, is it taking minutes from ZBJ? I mean, ZBG. Um, but obviously you do need backup regardless. And then we know ZBG is b better going forward than he is defensively. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, George Campbell, excellent pickup. A, a TFC is yeah. in need of a center back. And I'm, I'm a little bit jealous of that move, to be honest. I would have liked to bring him in um, to to partner. Even Sean Rea from the CPL. I yeah, don't... Sean Rea is returning. Hopefully he yeah. can make an impact. I think there is going to be a lot of pressure on him to perform, especially with the outgoings. Um, you got Mihailovic and Kone yeah. leaving, so there's a big void attacking wise um, for CF Montreal that they're going to need somebody to step up. And and you know, if, if obviously for a rival, you always want uh, your rival players to uh, flop. But uh, with Sean Rea being Canadian, it, it does make it difficult for the likes of me to say I want him to do terribly. Obviously, I want him to do well, but then maybe he'll get bored in the summer or something like that and move to Europe um and and who knows maybe cf montreal would be looking to do that um get rid of him as soon as somebody comes in for him um and robbie here was saying um i think with joey saputo i think this might be the turning point i think it depends on how this goes if it goes well it will show that he was right um and that giving into wilfred nancy's demands was the right and not giving into wilfred nancy's demands was the right thing and that they're going to build a good team or kind of do a rebuild and build a better team. Um, but it's very frustrating after just having like one or two good seasons and then you're doing a whole new rebuild, um, especially when you've had a good manager in and now he's leaving as well. And it's not like the manager underperformed. He got the most out of his players. Um, I think but, with uh, Saputo too, sorry to cut you off. No, go um, if you're if you are Saputo out, you need a, a replacement, someone that can yeah. like come in and fill in the job this is not like chelsea where you know one owner will come in and then someone will put in like a billion dollar bid yeah. for the club, right like montreal is saputo for now right yes. like it's he's difficult. been there for a long he knows how the market is right if you do if you do decide to be him being out because of off the field and on the field drama then you need someone that is able to replace some asap yeah, and it's difficult. It's an owner, right? You need someone with the cap. Yeah, and it, and it, and Joey Saputo has to be willing to go, right? It, it and and to sell at that price that the new owner comes in at. Yeah. it's difficult. It's difficult. It's impossible. And, and like you said, it's honest. not like it's not like um, Newcastle. It's not like Chelsea. It's not like, for example, Manchester United, where it's the creme a la creme, and all these rich owners from around the world are going to be interested. Is see if Montreal is somebody's going to be buying them. You're going to assume it's going to be somebody else from Quebec, um, or perhaps somebody else from North America. Maybe somebody in Europe with a French background. It's hard, to, but you never know, right? You never know. The Saudis could buy CF Montreal and try and turn them into, I, uh, <laughs> uh, into, into something. Yeah. Like, you know, who knows? Like who knows? Saudis, I personally, the Saudis can get Cristiano, maybe Messi. <laughs> but to be honest, in my opinion, as a Montrealer. The Saputo, that's that's like your your it's, your it's, okay. you're a businessman and you become successful. That's your baby, and yeah. you're not gonna sell that to nobody, even yeah. when you're worth billions of dollars. Yeah, so yeah. He, he, I will say that. To, 
Yeah, Saputo definitely has a connection with the club. It's not like, for example, 100%. with Manchester United and the Glazers. The, the Glazers oh, no. just see Manchester United as a source of income. That's all they see them as. The Glazers don't, are not on the same yeah, page as the, the fans. The, yes. you know, the, the fans is what... Yeah. It's all about the fans in the end, right? Yeah, for sure, like, for sure. Playing this game to win, but like, what are you doing? You're entertaining fans who are paying the ticket prices, the jersey prices, and that's, anyways, that's a, that's a whole other episode. But I actually yeah. got the text from my wife that I have to go in right okay. now. Okay. It was a pleasure being okay, here. Okay, thank you, Mehdi, for joining us. Fully prepared at home. It would have document, but you won, Chris. You guys know your shit. I'll be on anytime you want. Thanks, uh, Mehdi. Thanks for joining us. It. I want to come to a FC Montreal. FC Toronto game for sure, man. Set for sure, we'll have some beers. Awesome talking to you, sure, bro. Man. Thanks for joining us, yeah, Mehdi. Great Thank talking you. to you too, man. Keep in touch, huh? Okay, yes, man. sir. Peace. Right. Okay, one. So I think this is a good. Uh, uh, do you have anything else to add with regards to Montreal? I nah. like I said, I think uh, I think they'll do better than Vancouver, but that could just be because of my bias with regards to Vancouver. But I think the CF West Montreal, is more stronger too, right? Yeah, uh, but I think CF Montreal they can still do something. I think they can surprise some people this season. I think a lot of people are going to write them off completely because of what's happened in this off season, but I think they can do something for sure. Um, but we'll move on to our next segment, and that's the Canada Soccer Five Headlines. Um, so I'll come to you, Juan, and we'll discuss. We'll first touch on um, Theo Corbianu, who has gone to Armenia Bielefeld on loan in the Bundesliga Two in Germany. Um, what was your reaction to this? Um, it's good because uh, I think in Germany you have a little more patience in the English system, right? Mm -hmm. Because in the English system you have a you expect players to perform every single time. Mm -hmm. And since Theo Corbinu is such a young player, it, like you'll have your on and off days. Um, Armina Bellafield is a is still a good. <laughs> it's still a good. Um, it's still a good club, right? It's not the highest of. Highs, yeah. but um and they were previ they were recently in the bundesliga obviously i think they've come across hard times and they are in a relegation battle in um bundesliga to which you would obviously with a team that has had experience in bundesliga itself for quite a number of years it is quite shocking to see so but uh they're definitely in need of players um from what i can tell they play either the 4-2-3-1 or the 4-3-3 Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's important that Theo Corbianu gets consistent minutes at the right wing. And looking at the formations they play, they do play with a right winger. So hopefully he can get um, some regular starting minutes and he can show what he's made of. I do agree with you where the championship is very much about getting promotion and staying in yeah. the championship. Where Bundesliga 2 is definitely, from what I can tell, more focused on development. Obviously, you don't want your team to get relegated and hopefully... Theo Corbianu can have a positive impact with Armenia Belafalt and help them avoid relegation and maybe finish somewhere in mid-table comfortably away from the relegation zone. Um, but I think it is a move he did need. It's tr it's also a bit unfortunate that we he got recalled from his loan. Um, Blackpool, right? With, uh, with Blackpool. And then uh, yeah. Blackpool then uh, sacked their manager after the fact um, and then brought in a new manager. Um, he did get some opportunities with Blackpool and he did look good. Mm -hmm. um, from what I can tell, the social media reaction, Blackpool fans were disappointed that Theo Corbianu did leave. I think, although I don't know if they wanted him to be a starter per, per se, but I definitely think they wanted him to be used more. Um, and he was a bit of a inconsistent player, but a threat going forward. And they were struggling to score goals. And uh, Armenia Bellafeld was also struggling to score goals. Um, so I think Corbianu can definitely have a positive impact there. Um, so something that actually kind of changed recently... And that was the Kyle Laren move. He was going to oh, Cadiz. Yeah. <laughs> it all looked ready to go, and it was in my notes. And then last minute, I had to change it. And he's going to Real Valladolid, the team that's owned by R9. Um, and they are themselves in a bit of a relegation battle in the La Liga. Um, the, the move is a loan to start off, but if certain criteria are met, um, it will become a permanent transfer. Obviously, Kyle Laren did not have the best of times um at bruges and that was when they were even playing two up top and now um with scott parker coming in and they only playing one up top his minutes i don't think he had a future there at all um no. but what is what was your reaction to this uh, move what? i think it was like something that should have been done the last transfer window they barely had any playing time for my but, boy but he, but he just joined the club in the last transfer window that's what oh. i don't fully understand yeah 
the, what I w- his move to Bruges to me was all about the, the the salary they were offering him. From what I could tell, when uh, when Karl Aaron left Besiktas, he was so focused on earning a certain salary, That's and right. obviously Besiktas couldn't offer it to him. Um, he was linked with some championship clubs. Um, he was also linked to some Premier League clubs as well. And I just don't think anybody was willing to offer him the money because they knew if he was going there, he wouldn't be a starting player. Bruce wins in for him. But it was a bit of a strange one because I'm not even sure why Bruce was even interested in him because they have so – they have like five, six players that can play striker. I think I got my tinfoil hat on. I got a little conspiracy theory. Okay. So you know how Laren and Buchanan came in at the same time. What if yeah. what if Bruce had – like their primary target is Buchanan, and for them to to convince Buchanan to go to their club, they're like, "Oh, we'll sign your your countrymen as well. We'll have hey, Laren come it as happened. well." It happened, and that does happen in football. Look at Crescido uh, coming to TFC. He was he came, he came in because Insigne had wanted somebody to come in. Obviously, yeah. now with Bernadeschi being here, um, even though they're not as close as Crescido and Insigne are, you still have that fellow Italian here. And I think, yeah, you could be right. It could have been um you look uh, i'm adjusting to a new country new culture um can you bring in somebody that could maybe help me out and obviously buchanan is a very important player for bruges i don't know if he's long for bruges i think he probably will be on the move in the off season um possibly even in january depending on movement elsewhere um but yeah you're right this this carl Aaron move just never so weird just weird man like he, like i said he went for the money in my opinion he probably should have maybe even stayed at besiktas um i am concerned about Kyle Aaron. i don't know about you but he's just been so inconsistent throughout his career and he finally found a spot worked in besiktas after a loan in in belgium but now he's returned to belgium didn't go so well um i and he's a player that i find he plays better playing with a team that has the ball. And that's something mm-hmm. that we see with Canada. Um, when we play... Oh. Oh, and I'm loading. Oh, there we go. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, uh, yeah, I'm just going to be by myself. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm by myself <laughs> to, to finish the, the stream. But yeah, I'm, are you concerned about Carl Aaron? I, I am. I'm a little bit concerned. And in, in terms of his development or his career path? Just like his career path. Like, let's just say this move doesn't work and he ends up playing in La Liga 2 or La, uh, Liga Santander, I think it's called. Um, and he, his move is permanent, but his team gets relegated. But I don't know. It's just, I feel like he's a player that he needs a team built around him and a system built around him and in a team that's going to have the ball. And I just don't know if this move is going to be there for him. How old is he now? Is he? 30? He's in his late twenties. Like uh, for sure, 28, 29. Let's have a look. Kyle Laren. That is the the joys of doing things live. We can just uh, <laughs> Google it. Yeah. Um. He is Kyle Laren is twenty seven. So he's younger than you think. Ooh. He's turning yeah, twenty eight yeah. in April. So. So, because I'm thinking, right? I'm like, um, yes, a lot of these sporadic moves that aren't the greatest for him. But sometimes, as a player, um, you just want to get the bag, man. Like, you know, sometimes when you get the contracts, you're like, I know I'm not gonna last here long enough. Mm-hmm. So sometimes it's best, like, I'm gonna try to earn as much money as I can before retirement because that's where your most of your income will come, right? Um, do I see him developing further as a player? No, not yeah. really. I think he, he already is. created. Yeah, he, he's already identified himself as a specific type of striker. Mm-hmm. Um, so he might be become a journeyman, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. So sure. if if it doesn't work out now, I mean, like he's still a quality enough player to find uh, another team or here. But I'm not too concerned if, okay. he, if it doesn't work out. Um, when I say uh, concerned, like his national team status. Are you concerned about that? Like, do you think he'll get phased out? Or I think he, he was, was he was technically part- too, wasn't he? Yeah. Pardon? He was already getting phased out. Um, he was pretty consistent starter throughout qualifying. But at the World Cup, he only started what the one game. Well, no, he played started the two games. Because the one two game games. he played two up. I don't think he started all three. No. No, I think he started two. 
Um, but the, we do ha we do have some younger strikers coming through, and obviously if he he loses a spot because we have better players, and it is what it is. Yeah. But maybe I just expected maybe a little bit more from Kyle Larin, and it just seemed like he was he finally seemed to be reaching a decent level with Besiktas after some a bit of a rough time in Europe, and it's just unfortunate to it seems to have gone now to when he first went to Europe right now where you're not quite sure and he's not quite fitting in and he's not having the best of times. But I, I hope it works out for him. Kyle Lahren obviously is the, the record goal scorer for the national team. Obviously, I think Jonathan David will overtake him in the new future. But obviously, we want the best for him. But uh, yeah. he needs this work, is this move to work for him um, or else he might see himself moving lower and lower in the leagues in Europe. Um, Do you think he who, made an error for asking so much for the salary i was that a mistake i think so i think he should have maybe stayed at besiktas and taken i think they were offering him like two million a year and then he wanted 2.5 but then bruges came in and offered him like 2.3 so it wasn't what he was even wanting but it was the highest bid from what well, maybe, I maybe maybe he saw the writing on the wall as well because you had bashwai there weghorst right like that that's some pretty good competition yeah that's true it's true. And and sometimes they were playing him on the wing um, mm. at Besiktas. Um, he was, and, uh, and obviously I think he wants to definitely be a number nine. But he, he went to Bruges and he had no minutes there anyways, right? So yeah. staying in a place where you're familiar versus going to a new place. Um, but obviously we wish Kyle Aaron the best um, and his time with Real Valladolid and maybe R9 can teach him a thing or two while he's Get there. The haircut, the R9 haircut. <laughs> oh, the... the <laughs> <laughs> it was at the O2 World Cup, I believe it was. Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness, that haircut is legendary. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we'll go from one Canadian striker to a potential Canadian striker, and we'll move on to Daniel Jeverson, who has started getting some minutes and is finding his form with uh, Sheffield United. So he started for Sheffield United in their game on Friday, and he scored the winning goal. He also played for them in the cup a couple of weeks ago and scored for them as well. Um, so two goals in his last two starts. Um, hopefully he's earning himself a permanent position in the Sheffield United starting lineup. And he's a highly uh, rated dual national. Um, but his time at Sheffield United has been a little bit up and down. He's been sent out on loan and had good success on loan. But then Sheffield United has recalled him and just not utilized him. And I think that's been the most frustrating part of it all is he's been with Sheffield United, but he's not been playing for Sheffield United. But um, do you have high hopes for uh, Daniel Jefferson Juan? And he's, is he somebody that John Herdman needs to make sure he gets a commitment if possible and brings him in? I think what this goes to show is that uh, Daniel Jefferson is having like a, he's like a men mentality monster. Right. Like you you don't have that much minutes, but when you do play, you leave an impact on the yeah. field. And it shows that, like, um, the things that are, that are in your control, you're able to manage and you will be able to succeed, mm -hmm. right? As a player, you're it's difficult to, to have that kind of mentality because you look at, like, oh, why are they loaning me out? Why am I not getting many playing minutes? Um, it's, it's, it's tough, especially when you're in a foreign land and especially when you're in England where you have so much expectations. So for him to create an impact on such limited time, it goes to show that like uh, he's a beast. I think with uh, Herdman, definitely keep him on the radar, but you definitely need more consistent minutes. I think I just need to be a little bit more patient, uh, maybe uh, have him in the 26-man the squad for the friendlies in, in the, the Gold Cup. But uh, it's good to have – it'll be good to have him on because he'll have a different variety of what kind of striker you want as well. For sure. Um, and then obviously, you have, like we just mentioned, we have the situation with Kyle Lahren where we don't know what's going to happen. And as uh, Robbie says, like even at Real Valladolid, Lahren isn't even guaranteed starting minutes because they do have forwards there. Mm -hmm. um, although Real Valladolid have struggled to score, I don't think they've scored in their last five league games, I believe, is what I read. Uh, I apologize if, apologize if I'm wrong, but uh, maybe he's just an option that they're hoping to throw in. And if it works, he'll play. If it doesn't work, well, then he's just on loan. And then if he doesn't play, the criteria won't be left, uh, won't be met. And then he'll just return to Bruges in the off season. So it, it, it's, it's, I, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it works. Um, yeah, Daniel Jefferson, 
I, I want him part of the part of the part of the the, the squad uh, conversation going forward. Yeah. Um, with Laren, like I said, and then now with Ugbo also having struggles this season, um, Cavallini needs to find a new club. So the that's only surprising. striker right now that's like in a good place is um, uh, uh, Jonathan Jefferson? David. Uh, no, uh, yeah. Jonathan Davis, the only striker, right, Canadian striker right now who's in a good place. So I so think uh, anybody besides Jonathan David, I think with you, the door's wide open to make an impression. I think mm-hmm. Laren will obviously get the benefit of the doubt, 100%, um, over the likes of Cavallini and Ubo, um, because of his performances for Canada, especially in World Cup qualifying. But it'll be very interesting to see. And uh, I think Daniel Jefferson definitely, I don't know if he'll ever be better than Jonathan David, but if we can have two excellent strikers playing in Europe that are Canadian, I don't think anybody will uh, argue against that having the option of playing them both. Or if Jonathan David is having a bad day, you can bring on Daniel Jebison, who's firing as well. Uh, It would be nice to have. Um, Another move that happened within the English football is Sabrina D'Angelo has moved to Arsenal. Um, Although I do think she'll definitely be the backup goalkeeper to Manuela since Berger, but she is definitely moving up in level, moving from the Swedish league to the um, the women's league in England. Um, what was your reaction to this one? A solid signing. You know, I think um, I don't want to try to bring it to the men's Arsenal side, but I think now that there's so much attention to the club, it's a perfect opportunity to sign for them. Yeah. Um, I know even the, the Arsenal women's are top class, you know, yeah. like I think they're they've been a fantastic program. And uh, even if it's in that backup role, it'll be good for for her to learn um, the ins and outs of uh, the club itself, you know, and just uh, being at such a great environment and, and continue to learn how to, to develop and grow your, your game over there. Yeah, for sure. And you never know what happens. Maybe Zinsberger gets an injury and then yeah. D'Angelo goes in and she performs well and then she just stays in net. You never know what's going to happen. Um, yeah. But the, the key thing is to put yourself in, in the best possible opportunity. It's an opportunity for her to develop. I'm sure she'll get minutes and cup games and stuff yeah. like that. Um, but yeah, I think it's definitely a good opportunity. Obviously, something can come of it for her. Um, obviously, I don't think her goal is to be the backup for a team forever. But uh, maybe there'll be opportunities going forward. A, another move within the English football and one that was very exciting for me personally because we had uh, Jade Riviere joining Manchester United. Um, obviously, I don't think she'll be starting at right back because we do have an excellent right back in Ona Butler, who's been absolutely killing it this season. Where She's averaging an assist every game and has also scored a goal from fullback. But there's definitely an opportunity for her to play left back for Manchester United. Obviously, she's leaving college and going to the professional game, and it's quite a big step up. Manchester United's women's team is obviously a newer team, um, but it's a team where there is high expectations and they are performing very well this season. So what was your view of this move, Juan? I like it. Um, I was listening to Footy First uh, last night with uh, Nico Dransopoulos, and he knows a family member uh, with the Revere. Yeah. And uh, he said that the family member thought she would be going to Arsenal, right? And it's, it's funny how things change so quickly for her to go from Arsenal to Man United. Um, again, it's it's a great move for the Canadian women. It's nice to see the European leagues starting to invest in us. You see a woman, uh, I forgot her name, apologies, but one of the Electric City players went to yeah. uh, this one of the Swedish teams. Um, it's nice to see because I don't think I'll, I don't think we'll have the same opportunity as we would in the N- NWSL. The NWSL just had a draft, and I think they only had, like, one Canadian on yeah. that, which is, you know, unfortunate because I know for a fact the women we have here are as talented. And so it's nice to see that the, the women are going abroad and still having quality, quality, um, quality competition, and they're able to play in those competitions. So I, I'm excited for her. Yeah, I'm obviously, as a Man United fan, I'm very excited. I hope it all works out, and I hope she's a success. And... Um, obviously, like just as her, she's played for Canada, I think 30 plus times, and this will now be her first professional experience club wise. And I think that just shows 
I don't know, like her maybe the best way to describe it is her mentality, like playing college football or soccer or football, and then playing for the national team at such a high level, and then just going straight away to one of the big clubs. Yeah. No, I'm not going to go to some mediocre club. I want the pressure. I don't care where I come from or what I've done. I'm here to take it. Um, I, I'm very, very excited about about this, to be honest. Um, and I think she should be somebody, although she has been getting a lot of minutes for the Canadian women's team, it's somebody who we need to build around in the future yeah. as well, as a lot of our older players do phase out, unfortunately. The players that have brought us success over the last couple of World Cups as well as the Olympics. But um, we're going to be going, especially on the women's side, we are going to be going through a bit of a transition phase as some of the older players do move out and we do bring in younger blood. I think Riviere is somebody we can build around um yeah obviously can i just say something quick about the fa so um then the english fa gotta do better with the women women's game i don't know if you saw that tweet with the arsenal not arsenal's uh chelsea and liverpool playing Mm -hmm. so they had the women playing for the first five minutes but the the field was so like ice cold and it was like in the wrong kind of uh it was in the wrong kind of uh idea situation condition yeah, yeah the condi- there you go thank you uh it was in the wrong condition to play on and there was a lot of women slipping around because just the grass wasn't good enough and um they had a they had to delay the game because of that and yeah. i'm surprised that the fa doesn't have like uh heated pit- pitches for the women here like this is a this is top-notch women's football yeah league, unfortunately right? a lot of the women's sides to play out of the like the u23 stadiums and the youth stadiums so they, they need to do better they, they need so. to do better they need to invest more into it um 100 yeah. it doesn't look good right when you're the premier league uh, you, like all the games took place this past weekend but on the in the women's side a lot of the games either got cancelled or will not cancel but re- postponed um it's yeah. not a good look um when you think well the conditions are applicable to the set like it's the same conditions it's just the different stadium and the different facilities yeah and maybe not being prepared um, for said uh, conditions, to, weather conditions. Um, yeah, it is frustrating. It needs to be better. Um, but there's a lot of, like, on the woman's side, the, the the pay needs to be better. Everything needs to be better. It's going to take time, but we have to hold them accountable and say this is unacceptable going forward. This isn't something that can take place, mm-hmm. I believe. Um, yeah, Robbie, yeah, Shwanye is returning to uh, Forge, I'm sure... A lot of uh, uh, CP uh, Canadian Premier League teams were after him for sure. I'm York sure uh, York United was uh, trying to convert him over. I'm sure they were trying, but uh, he's committed to Forge. He, he saw how successful Babuli was. He's yeah. like, okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, he's like, I've, i He's like, he looked at. He, he was thinking of leaving Forge. He then looked at the trophy cabinets in Forge, and he's like, <laughs> you know what? I, I can't. I can't leave. Uh, that's fair. That's fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> uh it's the via do lead they oh the name oh. of the spanish club via do it via bio do lead bio do lead bio do lead and i th- i was saying bella do lead but bio do lead the lead okay okay now i know the more you know robbie's gonna have to teach me spanish on the side <laughs> although i i'll be honest in school i learned so many languages i had to like so africa so english isn't my first language it is now that I live in Canada, but Afrikaans was my first language, and having to learn English, then also having to learn Zulu, and then for su- and then That's in one, it. and then one random year we had to learn Italian, and then another random year we had to learn French. It made no sense whatsoever because those languages are not spoken in South Africa at all, and I retained zero of the the knowledge in those <laughs> two languages. Three was enough. Why they added in the fourth languages in the separate years, I do not know. But maybe Robbie, you can help me with my Spanish going forward. <laughs> I will appreciate it. Um, but I think that wraps it up for us this evening. Um, we for the first time ever we've kept it to an hour, which has been our goal this entire time. Um, yeah. but obviously we've gone over an hour and a half, sometimes even two hours. Um, so congratulations to us. We should pat ourselves on the back. We didn't rant and rape for too long this time. Um, we weren't talking about TFC, that's why it's yeah, this is true. Right? I get passionate about TFC <laughs> and can never stop talking. <laughs> Um, but next week we will be discussing the Vancouver Whitecaps offseason and we're going to have a Vancouver Whitecaps fan on 
to give his opinion. Obviously, uh, we have opinions on clubs, but I also if, always want to have a fan present of a club if we're going to go in depth of that club. I don't feel it's fair to speak on behalf on another fan base or on another club, especially if it is a rival. It may come across uh, not yeah. the best. Um, but I want to I want to thank my co-host Juan and Mary for joining us this evening, for joining me this evening. Um, I really do appreciate it. I wouldn't be able to do the show without them. Um, Robbie, who's been in the chat, thank you for giving us some company. And Robbie, uh, we know you've got some stuff going on. Just know that we're all here for you, to yep. support you in any way that we can. Um, Juan and Mary's links are in the description below. Make sure you give them a follow. Make sure you give uh, Juan a follow on YouTube and Twitch as well. Expect the uh, video dropping tomorrow. Okay, the video's coming yeah. out tomorrow? Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, make sure you check it out. I'll definitely retweet it on my both my personal and on the Canadian Footy Fan Channel uh, Twitter page for sure tomorrow. Um, thank you guys for joining us on Canadian Footy Fan Channel. Content for fans by fans. Obviously, this wouldn't be possible without the viewers watching. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel, smash the like button, and give your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. I have been your host, Chris, signing out.